You're listening to Curious and Interesting, a two-minute podcast on what's new and intriguing in the world of advertising research. I'm Dr. Barbara Phillips, editor of the Journal of Current Issues and Research in Advertising. Over a decade ago, advertising researchers noted that there were three kinds of advertising industry professionals. Those with moral myopia do not see any ethical problems with their work. Those with moral mutinous see ethical issues in the agency, but they don't talk about them. And those with moral imagination speak up about ethical issues and work to creatively solve them. The last group was in the minority. Since then, agency work has become even more complex and consumer trust in advertising messages has continued to decline. One common area of ethical trouble for advertisers is deceptive advertising, defined as occurring when a message depicts a product's attributes and benefits in a way that creates unrealistic expectations for that product's performance. Researchers Richardson Greenfield and Leferl interviewed 34 advertising practitioners to understand how they perceive, process, and approach deceptive advertising. They structured their interviews along the four stages of ethical decision-making, moral issue recognition, moral evaluation, moral intention, and moral behavior. In terms of moral issue recognition, a majority of participants expressed concern about deceptive advertising and acknowledged it existed. Despite these concerns, none of the participants felt they had ever engaged in deceptive advertising, nor had they received any training or education about deceptive advertising or how to avoid it. An account manager stated, while I understand there's a fine line between facts and opinions, No one has ever provided me with the standards that govern the advertising industry. In terms of moral evaluation, practitioners rationalized away deceptive advertising by asserting that consumers were smart enough not to be harmed by overinflated claims. For example, it's up to the consumer to make his own decision and to understand that advertising is a sales method. However, they also acknowledged that today's cluttered media environment did not really allow consumers the time and space to verify the large number of ad claims they are exposed to. In terms of moral evaluation, agency professionals relied on legal staff to check messages, using the decision rule that if it's legal, it's moral. In addition, they passed the responsibility for deceptive advertising onto their clients, stating, the agency is merely the organization that uses its creativity to express an idea or share information. It's the client who has to ensure that the information is accurate and true. In terms of moral behavior, The participants knew that if consumers learn that a brand has engaged in deceptive advertising, the brand and the agency will suffer. However, the practitioners in this study were not very concerned with deceptive advertising, placing the moral responsibility on the legal department, the client, or even on consumers themselves. It seems that not much has changed over the last decade. Given the growth in deceptive advertising lawsuits in federal court and the increasing publicity these judgments receive through digital media, the authors conclude that more needs to be done. As one enlightened advertising professional observed, agencies should have a moral stance. Above and beyond the FTC's rules, the advertising industry should police itself and hold each other to a higher ethical standard. For more information, this research paper was published in the 2021 issue of the Journal of Current Issues and Research in Advertising.